In today's digital world, conversational chatbots are transforming user experiences by optimizing customer support and fueling business growth. As these platforms evolve, which means the chatbot platforms evolve and attract more users, it's crucial to ensure they perform well under diverse conditions. So that's where we performance testers jump into the scene or that's where we catch up for performance testing. So right now we are seeing a trend where chatbots are being integrated with voice assistants, especially in e-commerce and retail. So in recent days, we were seeing about a lot of voice assistants in terms of chatbots as well, where coming up for uh, the e-commerce and retail platform. So this technology is making strides in healthcare and education as well. So with a conversational chatbot market projected to grow over 40 percent and it's essential to focus on performance efficiency through effective testing so in this video we will dive into how to plan performance testing for conversational chatbots and highlight the key performance indicators the kpis that you should track to ensure the top-notch performance so now we will see the architecture of the conversational chatbot performance architecture. So firstly, we have the user interface. So what is the user interface? So this is the front end element that we users interact with, typically presented through a chat window on a website or a mobile app or, an, or a messaging platform. So what are the features of this user interface? So this include text input fields, buttons, quick replies and even multimedia options. For example, you can even send emojis, images and videos as well. So the importance of this is a well-designed UI enhances the user experience by providing an intuitive and engaging way for users to communicate with the chatbot. So that is where we start to communicate with the chatbot. So we need to understand the architecture only then we will be able to understand the performance and we'll be able to assist in improving the performance so the next part is the natural language processing so the nlp uh, in short form is a technology that allows the chatbot to understand and process the human language and when it comes to the functions we have to inc i mean it, it basically the nlp includes the intent recognition which is understanding what the user wants to do and the entity extraction which is identifying the key pieces of information and response generation which is crafting the appropriate reply. So all these three has to be done by the NLP, which is understanding what the users want to do, identifying the key pieces of the information and crafting the appropriate replies. And the importance of the NLP is it's crucial for the chatbot to accurately interpret the user inputs and provide relevant contextually appropriate responses. That's how the chat GPT or any perplexity AI or even in, in fact, any of the chat bots that has been used by the websites is what it's doing it so the third part is the back-end services so these are the server-side components that handle the chatbots core functions and data processing so what are the components of back-end services so it does have servers which host the chatbot application and manage the interactions so next comes the databases which store the user data the conversation history and other relevant information so whatever we do they are stored in the databases and then the api so we have to enable the communication between the chatbot and external system or services such as crm systems or payment gateways and the importance of the backend services is it has a reliable backend services i mean like having a reliable backend services ensure that the chatbot operates smoothly and can handle user requests efficiently. And fourth is the integration framework. So the integration framework allows the chatbot to connect with the other software and services. And it integrates with the third party. It connects with the external platforms like social media, email services, or custom sub customer support tools. And it has it has uh, facilities to integrate with internal systems such as booking systems or inventory management. And the importance of the integration framework is integrations expand the chatbot's functionality and enable it to provide more comprehensive and useful responses. And then the machine learning, the machine learning algorithm basically helps the chatbot to improve its performance over time by learning from past interactions. And next comes the functions, the pattern recognition. So uh, 
the pattern recognition, which is part of the machine learning, which is one of the function of the machine learning, identifies the trends and the common queries to refine responses. Because sometimes when we go to the chatbot, we not only ask, like most of us will be asking a similar, a common query. So th those will be recognized. Those pattern will be recognized by the machine learning and then uh, the predictive analysis. So the machine learning anticipates the user needs based on the historical data, like based on our historical data. Like for example, if I am searching, I will be searching a set of data and they will have those data and that will do the predictive analysis. And then when it comes to the adaptive learning, so the machine learning adjusts the chatbot's behavior and responses based on user's feedback and, and the interaction pattern. So in fact, if you see you know, for the chat GPT, it'll ask, uh, whether I'm satisfied with the answer or not, so I'll be giving my responses. So th those points will be taken into account. So what is the importance of the machine learning? So machine learning allows the chatbot to become more intelligent and effective and enhancing the user satisfaction with more accurate and contextually relevant interactions. And finally, the performance monitoring. Yes, tools and processes used to track and analyze the chatbot's performance. So the metrics that we have to collect for the chatbot performance is the response times, which measures how quickly the chatbot responds to users' inputs. That's very important. It's not like web applications where we are going to load some pages, but it's about uh, we are going to measure how quickly the chatbot responds to user inputs and the error rate. So it tracks the frequency of issues or failures in processing the request. And then finally, the user satisfaction where I mean, again, everywhere it's always the user satisfaction. So we assess the we assess how satisfied users are with their interactions, often through feedback surveys or through ratings. So what are the tools do we use for this? So we use APM, Application Performance Management, which monitors the chatbot's operational health, including server performance and uptime, and then analytics dash dashboards, like we provide insights into user interactions, trends, and overall performance. So the importance of doing uh, the performance monitoring is continuous monitoring will help us to identify and resolve issues, optimize performance, and ensure a high quality user experience. So previously we saw about the KPI, uh, sorry, the architecture of the chatbot uh, performance and uh, or the chatbot. So now we will see the KPIs, the key performance indicators for the conversational chatbot application. So the first part of it is the mean time to failure. So the definition of the mean time to failure is the mean time to failure measures the average time between two consecutive failures of the chatbot. So how will you so so how will you calculate it? So this metric, the mean time to failure, is calculated by dividing the total operational time by the number of failures. And the purpose of doing this, I mean, why should we collect this uh, MTTF, the mean time to failure? It is because a higher mean time to failure indicates better reliability and fewer interruptions, interruptions, suggesting that the chatbot is less likely to fail frequently. And the importance of collecting this is to understand the mean time to failure helps in assessing the stability and the durability of the chatbot system over time. So when comparing to the web applications, it is like the amount of uh, errors or the amount of uh, the 404. So the more we get 200 response times, it is working fine. So this is something like an availability of the chatbot. And then the mean time to recovery. So the mean time to recovery is the average time required for the chatbot to recover from a failure and return to normal operation. So this is something like, I mean, when it comes to the web application, this is something like the application recovers from its failure. So how will we calculate the MTTR? So MTTR, the mean time to recovery is calculated by dividing the total downtime by the number of failures. And the purpose of it is to measure the efficiency of the recovery process and the effectiveness of support and maintenance procedures. And the importance of this is to lower the mean time to recovery, which indicates quicker recovery and less disruption to the users, which is crucial for maintaining a smooth user experience. And next comes the concurrent user capacity, the CUC. So this metric, the concurrent user capacity metric, represents the maximum number of users who can interact with the chatbots simultaneously without causing significant performance issues. So how will we calculate the CUC, the concurrent user capacity? So this is measured by stress testing the chatbot under various user loads. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to test how we're going to do a stress testing uh, the chatbot under various user loads. And the purpose of it is to 
help determine the chatbot's ability to handle high traffic and ensure consistent performance. And the importance of this is to uh, know the high concurrent user capacity, which is essential for maintaining service quality during peak usage times. And next comes the scale, the scalability. So scalability measures the chatbot's capability to manage increasing number of users or interactions without a significant drop in performance. Yes, we all know any uh, business would always want to improve or increase their users, user uh, numbers or user load. So that's what uh, that's where comes the scalability. So the horizontal scalability where we're going to add more instances or vertical scalability where we're going to upgrade existing resources. And the purpose of uh, doing a uh, this scalability testing is to evaluate our scalability uh, metric to understand the scalability metric is to evaluate how well the chatbot can adapt to growth and changing demands. And next comes the importance. So why do we need to test the scalability? So we have to effectively um, do the scalability testing to ensure that the chatbot remains responsive and reliable as user demands evolve. And next comes the response time. So the response time is the amount of time it takes for the chatbot to reply to a user's message. And uh, yeah, that's again, that's the very critical one, the response time. So in fact, if you go to any application, the performance testing where we will be focusing on the response time. So usually we measure the chatbot's uh, response times in milliseconds or seconds from the time a user sends a message to when the chatbot provides a response. So that's what um, we calculate as the uh, response times. And the purpose of it is to, I mean, the purpose is it indicates the chatbot's speed and efficiency in processing and responding to user queries. And the importance is short response times, which contributes to a better user experience by providing quick and timely interactions. And next comes the throughput, the TP, the TPS, I will say. So the throughput measures the number of transactions or interactions the chatbot can handle within a specified period. And the measurement is we typically quantify in transactions per second, which I told you uh, the TPS or TPM, which is transactions per minute. So the purpose of this metric is to assess the chatbot's capacity to handle a high volume of requests. And the importance is high throughput is important for maintaining the performance under heavy load and ensuring that the chatbot can manage large and large numbers of interactions effectively because even in a few uh, fractions of seconds, we'll be giving like lots of questions and the chatbot should reply to us, right? So that's what we are expecting from the chatbots. And next comes the error rate, the ER. So error rate tracks the frequency of failed or irrelevant responses provided by the chatbot. So the details when it comes to the calculation, so how will we calculate the error rate? We measure the ratio of incorrect responses to the total number of interactions. So if we have like 100 transactions, we will be measuring with it with like, if, for example, if you're getting one error out of 100, it's like 1% of error rate. And the purpose of uh, this metric, the error rate metric is, will help to identify the issues with the chatbot's accuracy and reliability. So anywhere we always want to see 0% of error rate. But unfortunately, in some scenarios, we'll be seeing the errors, but we will have to fix that. Or we'll have to recommend the uh, opportunity to fix it. So the importance of the, uh, the error rate is the lower the error rate are crucial for maintaining user trust and satisfaction as they reflect the chatbot's effectiveness in understanding and addressing the user needs. And finally, the resource utilization, the RU on the client side. So this metric assesses the consumption of system resources. So it's almost same like what we do for web applications, the, the resource utilization of, uh, or the CPU and memory utilization on the client device from which the user accesses the chatbot. So uh, we evaluate this by monitoring the resource usage during chatbot interactions and we ensure that the chatbot does not excessively burden the user's device. So normally we used to uh, check the CPU memory of the servers where the application is hosted. But this time, this is another level, the next level where you're going to uh, validate or we're going to monitor the resource utilization on the client side. It's not on the server side, this is on the client side. So we have to, uh, for sure, we have to uh, understand 
but we have to make sure that the chatbot does not excessively burden the user's device or network. And the importance of this metric is to make sure that uh, we do have efficient resource utilization, which contributes to a smoother user experience, especially on devices with limited resources or slowest network connections. So these are the KPIs for the conversational chatbot application performance. And now we will move on to the next part. So now uh, we will finally end up with the best practices of this chatbot conversational uh, performance testing. Um, so all right, let's let's break down how can we can ensure our chat chatbot performs well. So first up, we need to identify our performance goals and requirements. This means we should set clear targets for how quickly the chatbot should respond to should respond to users, and we also need to figure out the maximum number of users who can interact with it at the same time without any hiccups. And don't forget about resource utilization. We need to make sure it's not lagging too much it's not uh, taking too much of cpu or memory and next we will have to develop the test scenarios think of this as creating a playbook for how the chatbot will handle the real world use so we'll include a scenario based on common interactions that users might have like frequently asked questions or standard requests and also we should also plan for less frequent but still possible interactions to make sure the chatbot can handle these two and then it's crucial uh, to test our chatbot across various devices and network conditions. So we want to check how it performs on different devices, phones, tablets, desktops, to make sure it works well everywhere. And we need to test it under different network speeds like 4G or slow Wi-Fi to ensure it provides a good experience even with varying internet speeds. Now let's talk about monitoring the key performance indicators. So we'll use tools to keep an eye on important metrics like response times and error rates. And this will help us spot and fix any issues as they come up. So users always have a smooth experience. And lastly, we need to test the chatbot with different configurations. This means checking how it performs with various settings like different languages or visual styles and also we want to make sure it works well with no matter how users customizes their experience so by covering all these base we will ensure our chatbot is efficient reliable and ready to handle whatever comes its way and another important for information which is we are going to see uh, how to do chatbot testing using loadrunner in our upcoming uh, video session, uh, video uh, upcoming load on a training. So if you want to watch how do we do chatbot testing using load runner, so please do uh, join my training, which is coming uh, by the second week of September. I'll uh, share you the uh, information. So if you're really interested, you can join the trainings. So it's going to be a two-day training, and it will be very helpful for you in case if you are someone who is looking for chatbot performance testing. Uh, so I'm expecting you in our uh, training session. So until I meet you in my next video, it's bye-bye from Asan Shanmugam and your favorite little side tip channel. Take care and bye-bye.